Okay, we're about one week after Wipe. It's been a busy week. Been a lot of great combat. I figured I would do a quick and dirty video. A few of the combat highlights from the past few days. A lot of things I've learned. A lot of things I've been able to put to use. I trained up last season, and I I'm feeling good about this season. So we'll take a look at some full fight combat, and then I'll do some commentary afterwards. So here it is, quick and dirty blocks. Hope you enjoy. Good game, Dagger Fighter. Good game. Okay, some quick commentary in this fight. We'll cut into the chase a little bit. Here, I'm not sure what I did wrong there. Is it just not possible to get through the door if your opponent has the right position? I thought maybe if you were far enough left or you crouched. Okay, Dagger Fighters are a challenge. You can see the cuirass. You can see the plate on the hands and head. Loose trousers, light foot boots. Very difficult to catch him in the chase, right? Now he's got the bow out. I think I've got an advantage here. Because if I can block a shot, if I can block an arrow, I'll get the move speed bonus from my counterattack perk. Helps me close the gap faster. The problem is, I don't manage to block any shots. So I take, I think, three arrows here in the legs. Right. Now, the dagger fighter, he's kind of got me where he wants me. The dagger fighters basically have two phases of play. They want to do the chip damage first with their fast bows. Most of the time it's a survival bow. In this case, this player was using a recurve bow, but they don't want to start the melee until the opponent has been chipped down a bit. He's got his chip damage and now he's comfortable doing melee. So I know this. I know I've taken damage. I know now I have to watch it for the melee and here it comes. Thankfully, thankfully I've gotten much better at blocking the Rondell daggers. So two successful blocks there and I do this by aiming for the fighter's hand. If you, if you Click and hold block and train your aim on the hand of the dagger. You're much more likely to get the block, and that's what I do here. I'll take it back. So here it comes. And it's also important that I'm, I'm only going one for one. I'm not trying to do two or more attacks. I really am being patient. I'm getting one block. I do one attack. I reset. So that's good on me. So that threw him for a loop. This is a really good move there. I'm going to bring this back. The fake run, very fast turn and attack. This is what you really have to watch out for against these guys. Is a lot of high-end fighters, a lot of really high-skilled fighters, will do the fake run. They pop their sprint. It seems like they're trying to pull away from you, and then they turn instantly, get the attack in. I wasn't ready for it. I got clipped. It did a lot of damage. Now he wants to body block me. If he was smarter, he would have done a better job there of blocking me in the flames. And then thankfully, here at the end, the buckler is just so small. Right? This is why I always pick a heater. This is why I'm so invested in a heater shield. It's because I've tried to use the buckler so many instances of a clutch part of a fight, of a, a very important part of a fight, and the buckler is just so small to use reliably. And you can see here just how much of his flank is exposed. A heater shield, you know, there's still a chance I'm going to be able to see a bit of the side of his body, but the coverage is so it's just so much better. So this is really interesting for me to see from my perspective on just kind of how difficult and, in my opinion, inferior the buckler can be in these kind of like clutch moments when you really need to get that last block. He doesn't get it. He loses the fight. Cool. Morning star. Got him. block. 
Go for two. And a block. Got him. Okay, this was a great fight against a smite cleric. I wish they could all be this good. It was pretty clean. But there was two things in particular here I wanted to call attention to. And the first thing has to do with the cleric's skill. With judgment. So you see, I got... There I got hit with the judgment. And I didn't freak out. I've trained myself to not worry too much about getting hit with the judgment because if you try to turn and run, that's when you get punished. As a shield fighter, we have the luxury of being able to stay close to the cleric. So if you ever get hit with a judgment, the worst thing you can do is try to space or like let that freak you out and turn your back. It's better to stay calm, stay focused, and get ready to continue with the melee. So a bit of perfect block there, which is good. Resets his combo. You can also see that I'm trying to fight him in the door because there is a small chance that the arc, the Morningstar attack pattern, might clip the frame of the door and make it easier for me to get an attack. It didn't quite work it that way, but again, just trying to pay attention to positioning around the door frames to make it harder for the Morningstar to connect is always a good idea. So by now my perfect block is worn off. I'm trying to space him. And then one there, two handle there, block. go for two, and three. Handle block. Three handle blocks. Very, very fortuitous, but I think also they say that luck is the residue of design. So I've really started getting in the habit of trying to get close and stay as close as I can to these heavy melee players. The Morningstar is formidable, is intimidating, is really difficult to play against from like a regular range distance because the impact power is so great. If I don't have my perfect block available, it can be very difficult to trade effectively against a Morningstar or other weapons that have similarly high impact powers. But the handle block, as I've mentioned in other videos, the handle of a weapon has a hitbox. The handle of a weapon has essentially no impact power. It's going to be staggered every time. So by getting very close and having my shield up in the face of the cleric, as soon as he tries to swing that Morningstar, the first thing that hits the shield is the handle of the Morningstar. And that basically stuns the weapon. It interrupts the combo makes it very difficult for the cleric to have any sort of sustained offensive capability. So it's really good to see here how getting close and staying close to a melee player like this smite cleric can be very, very effective in winning the combat. Got him. We'll just take it back here. And a block. And a block. Go for two. And a block. Yeah, a bit greedy going for two, but you can see just how effective it is to get close Look up with your block, and when you hear that handle block sound, take advantage of your counterattack. Cool. No way you there's a there's a team here. In the water. Oh. Fall back. Push back. Push back. Yep. Fall back. Fall back. Fall back. Into the door. Through the door. If you can. If you can make it. No, 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 I guess he can just re-hit me. That's actually crazy. I didn't know you were fighting. Good job. Oh, no. Oh! I jumped it. Oh, I missed him. Zap, you're he just missed. you better, bro. Got him. You're just better. You're just better. <laughs> I love it. Oh. Lynn is it just better. <laughs> okay, so here's a look at duos. Wolf and I had just won the fight. Didn't even have a chance to loot. Oh, fall back. Oh, push back, push back. Yep, fall back, fall back, yeah. fall back. So some good comms. They caught us out. Tough spot. Into the door, through the door, if you can. I was you hoping can to get Wolf in there. No, no, no. I guess he can just re hit me. The reach of the Bardiche is just devastating. Bardiche is such a hard weapon to play against. Okay, so trying to loot up after the first win against the first team. This other team comes up on us. We're caught out a little bit in the open. Try to collapse to a better position. I like that strategy. I like trying to rally around a choke point like a door. Especially against a weapon like a Bardiche. With a caster behind. I feel like there's advantage there. But unfortunately, the reach of the Bardiche is just so long. Wolf got tapped out. Managed to take down the Barb. And now my health is super low. So my thought here is... I, you know, I'm, I'm one shot. I'm so close to dying... Why don't I try something risky and see if I can jump the fireball? Oh no. <laughs> I jumped it. <laughs> so that's a bit of trading, right? That's a bit of uh, 
That's something that I realized you could do last wipe, and every chance I get, I, I basically try to jump the fireball, and it really came in clutch there, so really happy to see that. Oh, I missed him! So now, again, trying to chase down this Wiz. The Wiz was smart, didn't go for the full cast there, knew I was too close. Made a little more space, and the, the other thing to call out here, important for shield fighters, when you're chasing casters, when you're chasing wizards in particular, had I switched here to my crossbow or to my throwing axes, probably would have died. You want to keep a blocking option. Keeping a blocking option means that you've got a chance to block the ice bolts or the zaps, and that's what happens here. Zap, he you're missed. Better, bro. Got him. Okay, so pretty good chase down there. Again, the moral of the story is try not to switch to your ranged prematurely. If it feels like the caster is eager to cast, stick with your heater, go for the blocks, close the gap. Okay. This looks like a falchion. Two. Got him. Two. Burning. It's gonna hurt. Got him. I got him. GG, man. So this was a very difficult fight against another fighter using a falchion and a shield. Whenever I can, I love to start fights with the advantage of darkness, and... This is a really good example of how kind of little visibility that the torches actually have. You can see just how close this fighter is coming. If you look at the ground, if you look at the ground around the legs of this, it looks like I should be visible, right? Based on what I see in terms of illumination on the ground. But from the opponent's perspective, if they see a different picture, it's not as bright as it looks from your first person perspective. So I've learned to wait an extra heartbeat or two to see just how close the opponent will come and you might be surprised to see that they actually will come a lot closer than you expect. Gives me a chance to get a good drop shot on him. This looks like a falchion. Very difficult to block the falchion, so I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie, I'm okay. a little bit intimidated by the falchion combat. The falchion is just such a difficult one-handed weapon to play against. It's probably the most difficult one-handed weapon to block, if I'm being honest. It's harder than daggers. It's harder than the rapier. It's harder than all of the heavier-hitting one-handed weapons. It's a combination of the attack pattern coming kind of in a diagonal down motion, in a diagonal slash, which makes it hard to read. It can go high, it can go low. It's also a lot longer than it looks. You think because it's a one-hander, it is short but it actually has the ability to reach around the side of your shield. It's not good enough if you just have your shield up, pointed at the character. You really have to turn the shield quite dramatically to the left to successfully block that incoming shot, that first shot. So I'm already on the back heel here because I've been hit twice. I got a lucky exchange there. Number two. Got him. And then that there, I find, is the... If I have to push and, and test the falchion, it's almost the most effective, it's almost the most reliable to get as close as you can and again aim for the hand. The handle block on the falchion seems to be much more reliable than trying to block it at distance. And this is a, an example of how one really good block can turn the table of the fight. It's not always necessary for you as a shield fighter to block every single attack. You can see I was already on the back foot here, but I got this one kind of clutch block and it let me get in a little more damage and from here it, it just changes the whole complexion of the fight. So I include this to encourage you, even if you are behind in a combat, if you can pick an attack you know you can block more reliably. I was more confident blocking that number two attack from the Falchion, so I moved in, closed the gap, got the block I needed, did the damage in the counterattack, and now we basically have a mini reset. I've got a chance to actually win this thing. I'll take it back here a little bit. So he misses, thankfully, and then I'm in there, and I block the handle. Miss, number two, handle block. 
He misses Two. there again, thankfully. That might have dropped me. And now he wants to run. A little bit of utility, Burn and it. I go for my longbow. It's gonna hurt. Got him. And then thankfully was able to close out the fight there. GG to this guy. I kind of freaked out early on in the combat. I'll show you again. We'll take it back and we'll look at just how hard it is to block some of those opening falchion shots. That's just a closing note here. Yeah, so here we are. You can see just how it looked like I was in a pretty good position. But I need to turn my camera even more. Even though it looks like there's no way that sword can get around my shield. It could also be a bit of a decent issue, right? Because we are looking back in time. Every picture you see, you have to imagine your opponent is a few frames ahead in time. Just due to the nature of our clients and communication over the internet. So that could have been it too. That by the time my block actually went up, he was already finishing his swing. Already registering the hit. So it's a combination of things. You really have to... Be careful with the Falchion. Just because the damage output is so high, there's very, very little margin for error. You have to turn your camera enough, and you have to kind of anticipate the attack. Again, realizing that your opponent is a few frames ahead of you in time as just another incentive to already be in the blocking position and already have your camera turned. Very difficult. Good luck. Oh man, that's so funny. Okay, I'm really excited to include this clip last. I think this is one of the best ever fights I've had against the Druid. And it really does encapsulate a lot of the things I've learned over the past weeks. Hit the wall there with the mace, which is always kind of frustrating. There's very long reset time. Gives the Druid a chance to go bear form. And here I'm kind of in a really bad spot, right? He's got some damage on me. I don't have anywhere to go. Thankfully, two things happen. I can jump over the barrel and he turns Panther here. I'm not sure if he was trying to transform there. He just kind of lost track of himself. Perfect block on the round shield didn't do enough to combat the impact power of the bear slam. And they're in a flurry, right? We've survived round one. So that was a feat in and of itself where I just was able to dig myself out of that positioning hole I was in. But of course, the, <laughs> the respite doesn't last very long, right? So I win round one. He pulls away, closes the door, heals up. I have to expect he's coming back soon. Here he is. Thankfully, I've got this small opening here that I can work around. And I've learned that bears can't go through these doorways. And this has been a major milestone for me. To take the bear fights around 
open doors because they can't come through. And that is very, very useful. So I'm just not, you know, I'm not stressed. He has to go Panther. Panther, it's, you know, they take way more damage. It's, I mean, in a way, easier to block. But his options are limited. If there's an open door frame, this has just been such a major advancement for me in my versus Druid tech that I'm no longer sweating it, really. It's, it's, a, it's a big step. So he's bandaging too. This is kind of like full reset here. I know he wants to pull me into this room. I'm taking the bait intentionally. He is smart. He walls off the door. Now I'm in trouble again. I've let myself get kind of like lured into an open space. Looked like a handle block there on the bear paw, which was interesting. And then thankfully I'm able to block and use my counterattack speed. Um to make it through the safety of the door. Again, bears can't come through the door, so he has to go panther. I'm expecting that. I get a nice headshot. I can block. The panther hitbox, man, I really don't like how the panther moves. It's really awkward. It has kind of like a middle rotation point. It just swings around so counterintuitively. I think it's just another advantage that druids get in this form. It's very difficult to land a hit if they're kind of turning to move away from you, but that's fine. Thought maybe there's a chance for me to burn the rat, but I'm kind of freaking out. I think I was excited because I've done a lot of damage to the druid, and like I can feel that like I'm up in the combat, and that's making my hands shake a bit. So that was a bit of a misplay there, trying to burn the rat. But I want to keep the pressure on. I don't want to give the druid any space. Another good melee hit. So he wants to stay in the open room. I want to move back through the door. I bait him in. I think the reason he was being so aggressive there is he probably thought that I was lower than I was. Maybe in his mind, he thinks, oh, if I get one more panther hit in, I'll win the fight. So he kind of, you know, gambles on that. He pays for it. I do damage. And now the panther pulls back. He wants to stay as a bear. I don't give him the satisfaction. I think here the druid is trying to push the door so they can get to the other side to turn into a bear again. Not exactly sure what the thought process there was. And then, <laughs> very, very lucky, very, very lucky uh, rat shot. Throw the torch. All it takes is, you know, a small, small amount of damage. But this was kind of intentional, right? Rats want to jump through windows. Rats want to run to safety. And if you can line up even a torch, even if you have something simple like a torch, and you can kind of, like, predict where the rat is going to go, there's a chance for you to get that winning strike. Do that winning amount of damage, even with a torch just by taking advantage of the predictability. So here, I figured the druid was trying to run to safety. There's a space between these two jars. I rolled the dice, and it looks like I scored the hit. So GG to this druid, GG to me, because this is a huge step forward in terms of my composure against druids in melee, kind of learning what the strengths and weaknesses are against that class, um, and just keeping my cool and coming up with a dub against what I felt was a very, very frustrating thing to play against last season. So here's... Here's hoping better luck against Druids this season. Dagger? Are we gonna push them or wait for them to come in here? What would you like? Would you prefer to wait here? I would prefer to push them. Okay, let's do it. I'm with you. I'm right behind you. Yep. Come on back if you need to. I'm on the barb. Rogue's injured. The barb is distracted. Okay. I'm on the barb here. I jumped down. He missed. I'm blocking. He's distracted on me. We got him. <laughs> Good work. Nice work, buddy. Good push on the door. Okay, let me take the barb. You fall back, fall back, fall back. I got the barb. I'm on the player. Right? Yep. I'm on the barb. I'm on the barb. You're doing good. Uh, both of them are pretty lit, bro. Well, one of them is. Man, I don't know how he took that shot. <clears throat> nice, last one. Yeah, you can touch him, he's pretty lit. Got him. Very nice. Good job, brother.
I found all these mobs, buddy. <laughs> oh! See you later! I think I got mobbed. Yikes. Let's go. Ready? Yep. Let's go. Ranger's dead. We're in. I'm on the warlock with you. Oh, yeah, I, I keep missing. I traded butts. I'm so sorry. I, I fucked up. You're on your own blend. I missed. Warlock's dead. No, he's not. He's now. Wait, what? Oh. Yes, so good. I thought I saw him. <laughs> He wants the Mika. Oh, I got him. Oh nice. my god. What was that, man? Okay, that's it. If you made it this far in the video, thank you so much. I really appreciate you watching. Of course, if you have any questions about the combat here, if you have any recommendations, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear it. Another quick reminder that every Monday, starting at 1 p.m. Eastern, we have a blocking-focused live stream called The Board Meeting. If you're a shield enthusiast, or even if you're just shield curious, stop by, say hello. It'd be great to see you. I wish you good luck in the weeks ahead. Good luck with your quests. Happy crafting. We'll see you around.